far and wide. We thank you for your attendance here. You are such a tribute to this province and to this community. Thank you so very, very much. Please stay the entire day. If you're not from Cardston, stay the weekend. Move here if you choose. We will take you with open arms. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Rick. Now that invitation to move in is even extended to folks from Del Bonita. But if one of you was to move here, that would have the population of Del Bonita. Lindsay Blackett is the Minister of Culture and Community Spirit in the Government of Alberta. As such, he is responsible for not only historic sites and museums, such as the Remington Carriage Museum, but also for the arts, which are a special passion for him. That is fitting, since he will now receive, on behalf of the people of the province of Alberta, this donation of one of the most significant pieces of art to be produced this year, or indeed any year. Please yeah. welcome the Honorable Lindsay Blackett. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be back in Cardston and be here on behalf of Premier Stelmack and my government colleagues, including my, my good friend and her MLA for Cardston Table Warner, Boyce Jacobs. You know, today is kind of like a trifecta for me because, as Howard just mentioned, we get to celebrate a monumental piece of art to represent an icon in George Wolf, a Cardston boy who's made good and became one of the best, if not the best, uh, jockeys in the world. And also Seabiscuit, which is an athlete by any measure of historical significance. Also, I'm responsible for heritage and I'm responsible for community. And it's great to be here along with my colleague. We have uh, our mayor, uh, Rick Shaw, Shirley McClellan from the uh, Horse Racing Alberta, Jack and Ida Lowe, who so graciously and uh, generously donated this work of art, um, Howard Schneider, as I mentioned, Mr. Tony who, Tony, who created this wonderful piece of art we're about to see, uh, members of the Wolf family, museum staff, and everyone in this, in this wonderful community. And I mention all those names because it's a community that makes it happen, and Alberta is the place it is, the best place in the world to live, I would say, because of the people. It's families that got together to help one another a hundred years ago, worked together to help a neighbor with their farm, with their, raise their barn, looked out for one another, and made sure that we made ourselves stronger and more significant. And what we have to do, we have to be really vigilant, is to remember our history. Our history is the window of the soul of who we are. It's what made us who we are today. It's what gives us the things that we get to enjoy, and it shows what our future is going to be. And I can't mention community without mentioning the men and women in uniform, and it's so great to have members of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and, and our armed forces here today. As I mentioned, George Wolfe and the famous Thorbed Seabiscuit are part of Alberta's rich history. The Remington Carriage Museum is home to the largest collection of horse-drawn carriage vehicles on display in North America and one of the finest collections anywhere in the world. This museum showcases 240 plus vehicles that allow visitors to experience the lifestyle of Alberta before the reign of the automobile. The museum is also now home to the statue. We're ho proud to host it for all Albertans. It's a chance for them to come and see it and for the world to remember a piece of our historic past. The life-size bronze represents a story of unexpected triumph with strong Alberta connections. George Wolfe, obviously from Cardston, the Lowe family who commissioned the statue, ranchers from right here at Cardston, Don Tony who created and designed the beautiful statue from Lethbridge, and Red Pollard, Seabiscuit's other principal jockey from Edmonton. Albertans have to be a lot to be proud of in this incredible story. There are two people who are exceptionally proud and wanted to show it, Jack and I to Lowe. On behalf of the province, I want to thank the Lowe's for their generous 
donation and commissioning this $150,000 statue. Lowe's desire to showcase this moment in history will strengthen Remington's visitor experience by celebrating a thrilling chapter in horse racing, which has had a storied and vibrant past in our history. Future generations will know this, the story of the Carston boy who rose to fame with Seabiscuit in 1938. I'd like to thank Horse Racing Alberta for hosting this event and may the statue and its story evoke and serve as inspiration to all to live our dreams and fulfill our potential. Because as Albertans, we've always done that and will continue to do so in the future. Thank you for having me here today. Thank you, Minister Blackett. And we're going to get uh, serious now. And as an indication of that, I wish this goes in before my power goes out. So our honor guard is in place now, and you'll notice that the jockeys are wearing racing silks. Uh, you'll notice that I, too, am wearing racing silks. The H, the H stands for Howard, of course, <laughs> but not Howard Snyder. It stands for Charles Howard, who was the owner of Seabiscuit. The shirt has the same color scheme and the same pattern as the one worn by George Wolfe whenever he rode Seabiscuit. Looks like my papers got shuffled too. Now you might think that uh, I don't look like a jockey. Some people have said that to me today. The but you'd be surprised. The jockeys you see here are on the thoroughbred racing circuit. I am on the less well-known but highly competitive Clydesdale racing circuit. <laughs> I see where the person is the host. In fact, I'll tell you a little incident that happened this morning right out here. One of the jockeys walked up, and he hadn't been working as a jockey for a while, and he, he felt self-conscious because he had put on some weight. And he walked up and he saw me, he says, he patted his tummy, he says, well, now I don't need to worry. <laughs> <laughs> and you can tell who it was. <laughs> okay, the race. Now about the moment depicted in the statue. In 1938, George Wolfe was chosen to ride Seabiscuit in the match race against War Admiral at Maryland's Pimlico Racetrack, a contest known to this day as the Race of the Century. The Eastern Press talked of Seabiscuit's poor chances, and the opposing stable and their jockey, Charlie Kurtzinger, were openly derisive and thought that, the, that Seabiscuit was nowhere near a credible challenge to War Admiral who was the Triple Crown Champion and 1937's Horse of the Year. Kurtzinger said, and was quoted in the newspapers, I don't care if Wolf elects to try to make a race of it, the Admiral will lick him in any part of it. I don't think Seabiscuit will give him much